All right, everyone. Thank you for coming to the sixth Webster High School Athletic Hall of Fame banquet and induction ceremony. My name is Rich Barnaby. I am the treasurer of the Athletic Hall of Fame. I'm taking over for Bob Healy, who was not feeling well tonight. Uh, I'm used to taking over for legends uh, like Elon Johnson, and then disappointing everyone after. So hopefully, I'm not going to do as good as Bob would have done as the MC, but uh, I will try my best. Uh, if everyone can join us, uh, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We're going to have our president, uh, Frank Stefanides, lead off with some introductory uh, remarks. together for you. So one at a time. Uh, of course, me as president, it's too bad. Um, Treasurer Richard Barnaby. Uh, for six. <laughs> Our facilitator, AD, Dave Palazzi. <laughs> Vice President, Bob Healy. I was injured late yesterday, couldn't even drive his car. Uh, uh, on sabbatical, Jay Gilson, a very huge member of this group, is in Germany through a work, working in Germany for about a year, but she still keeps in touch with us. She always did a great job for, for us. Jill Jay, Jay Gilson. Um, one of our directors, Tom Ciccolini, phenomenal job at organizing most of this event. Another director, Peter Michaels. Peter, uh, if you know Pete from the Lewis High School days, he's uh, been on, on, a, on the men for a couple of years now. Uh, hopefully we'll get him back, back on the committee before too long. Pete Michaels. <laughs> Another young lady who's uh, been at work right now, uh, our clerk and secretary, Sheila Thomas. Now we go to the grunts of the group. They do a phenomenal job. The director, Bill Devani. Great job today. Thank you, Bill. Another great addition to our group was Joe Quinn. And the mild-mannered and quiet Ray Richard. And finally, last but not least, is Bobby Sabatelli. Another phenomenal job he does. Uh, during our, over the last couple of years, one of our former inductees from 1959, was it, Bobby? 58? Uh, Jim Gately is donating 20000 a year for scholarships, scholarships we give to one, uh, two male, two female athletes. Uh, every year we go to the uh, awards night, they present them at the end of May. And every year we got great candidates. We're working on it right now. We'll be all done and have four more candidates coming in in another month or so. so thanks to Bobby Sabatelli, he keeps it going. Thank you, Jimmy Gately, who's in Pennsylvania. And he donates a lot of money to keep this thing going. Thank you, Jim Gately. Now, in order to run this event, besides the ticket sales, we also do some fundraising. We have a golf tournament in, in uh, September. Uh, we have trivia night using the the Friday before Super Bowl. So if you're interested in helping us out at those events, please keep uh, keep yourself posted to what's going on, and we can do all the help we can get in that respect. Uh, if you in the future, nomination procedures to get here is usually a tough thing to find out, but it's really easy. Go on our website. It's a nomination form. Fill it out. Send it in. Bobby gets it. He shares it with us. We go from there. Very simple. Very democratic. We all vote on it. 
and it works out great so far. Okay. Um, in the crowd, we have also have some dignitaries. I want to start with our, our mayor, Dean Mazzarella. State Rep. Natalie Higgins. The City Council, Claire Frieda. And that's all I got for you. Have a great night. All right, our first nominee, um, I mean, one of the best parts about doing this as a historian is to learn about all the great athletes that have come through uh, Lemonster High School and paved the way. Um, so, uh, Frank was just whispering in my ear, it distracted me a little bit. <laughs> Especially as a parent uh, with a female athlete, a softball player, um, all the women that have paved the way um, to give her opportunities, she's gonna be playing uh, softball in college next year. Um, just to, to see all the great people and great athletes is really overwhelming. So our first inductee is going to be Mary Allard. She's a graduate of Lemonster High School, class of 1978. Lassie League All-Star, 1972-1976. Uh, junior high school played field hockey, basketball, and softball. Played three sports in high school. Eight varsity letters, which is amazing. Uh, field hockey, two varsity letters, basketball, three varsity letters, softball, three varsity letters, softball, co-captain or senior year, all-around player, award, softball, senior year, received her varsity jacket, 1977 vice president of Guys and Girls Athletic Association, 1978 played in Concord Mass Field Hockey League, 79 and 80 played softball at Mount Wanchusett Community College, most valuable player at Mount Wanchusett Community College, played softball, uh, marathons at Coolidge Park uh, for Make-A-Wish, 1977 to 2005, City League softball between Lemister, Fishburg, Clinton, and Hopkinton, 2006 to 2012, Coach Marlboro Girls softball, 1979 to 2010, avid competitor of racquetball and pickleball. Just an amazing accolades, um, Mary Allard. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Just like high school, I'm first. So some of my earliest childhood memories are walking to 12th Street, Ronnie Bushown, Little League Field, watching my dad, Ray Allard, umpire. I so wanted to be on that field. Finally, when I was nine years old, my dad finagled me to play Lassie League a year earlier than I was eligible. Being on that field was like I died and gone to heaven. That first year of Lassie League was even more memorable because I was playing alongside my closest childhood friends, Carol Chirigny, who's also being inducted tonight, unfortunately couldn't be here, and Nancy Perler, who was inducted last year in the Hall of Fame. Needless to say, our class was very athletic. Throughout middle school and high school, I played three sports a year, which I believe kept me focused in the classroom. Sports are an aspect in my life that I always enjoyed whether watching, playing, or coaching. Along with the Lord, my family, and my friends, sports have always made me feel fulfilled. I would like to thank the people who nominated me for tonight and for the Hall of Fame committee for awarding me this honor. Thank you to all my coaches throughout the years, because there were many. Thank you to my parents for their support during my school years and also by watching my babies while I was playing adult softball. They'd be right on the sideline in the bullpen, on my parents' laps. Last but not least, to my children, Carrie, Dean, and Cora, for being my biggest fans during my adult years as I played softball, racquetball, and now pickleball. <laughs> I have to do it. Women's sports have obviously come a long way in the past 45 years, which makes receiving this honor at this time 
more meaningful. Thank you very much. We, um, so, Representative Higgins has a very special citation for you uh, as well. <laughs> Congratulations. Our second inductee, again, another amazing female athlete at Lemister High School, Carol Terigny Bingham. She was a graduate of Lemister High School, class of 1978. What, uh, that was an athletic class. Uh, Carter Junior High School basketball, softball, and field hockey. Um, field hockey player, Lemister High School, 75 to 78. Co-captain, field hockey, senior year. Basketball player, Lemister High School, captain of the basketball team, senior and junior year. Softball player, Lemster High School, captain of the softball team, senior year, varsity jacket, eight years of combined sports and varsity participation, softball district champ uh, tournaments, 1975 to 1978, field hockey district tournament, senior year, white blazer award, and sportsmanship senior award in recognition of outstanding academic accomplishments, excellence in athletics and sportsmanship, president of the GAA, um, 1977 to 1978. She played softball at Westfield State College, 1979, and played on competitive fast pitch softball team, 1979 to 1982. Um, Carol lives in Washington State and had some family stuff, but she did uh, want us to read a remark on her behalf. Uh, all the above awards are greatly impacted by my excellent coaches and teammates because we were competing and working as a team, not in an individual sport. I am proud of playing with some of the best women athletes at LHS. My favorite memories involved the friendships developed, lessons learned, and opportunities to be a leader and friend. <laughs> Our next inductee uh, would be Charles Sid Brown, graduate of Lemster High School, Class of 1953, 12 varsity letters, three each in football, basketball, baseball, and track. Halfback for the 1952 LHS undefeated football team. Let's hear it for him. We led the, <laughs> led the 1952 53 Blue Devil basketball team in scoring with 374 points. Broke the school record in scoring in 1953. Starting first baseman for the LHS baseball team. 1952 baseball team selected as the outstanding team by North Worcester County sports writers. 1951 won five of seven dual meets for LHS track team in the 880 yard. 1952 amassed the third highest number of points for the team. Led the 1952 LHS track team to the North Worcester County Track Championship. 1953 undefeated 440 yard track event, outstanding basketball official in Central Mass for many years. Speaking on his behalf uh, will be his, his son, uh, Timmy. Inducted tonight for basketball and track, but he was also a four letterman, very accomplished in football and baseball as well. Some personal insights and memories regarding my father, Sid Brown. Um, he lived for and loved kids, everything about them. He was often found coaching and helping children everywhere. He went everywhere he went, whether their official coach or just some local kids at the gym or in the neighborhood. During his funeral, many people now adults who were children at the time, now adults whom he coached in our new expressed profound gratitude and love for his service and kindness with them. 
They referred to him as a father figure or even a second father. He was much more than a coach to those individuals, it seems. His love of Lemister was deep and eternal. Although born and raised in Fitchburg, at about 12, when he was told by his mom they were moving to Lemister, he was devastated and cried bitterly. <laughs> <laughs> A great example of his future love of Lemonster would be when my mother and his and father would be speaking about their retirement, where would they end up in the houses they would buy, etc. Uh, Sid would always adamantly and proudly state the only way he would agree on any of it, Virginia, was if we had a house in Lemonster as well. <laughs> if not, forget about it, he said. <laughs> When growing up during the holidays, I also remember clearly on several occasions my father would bring home some of the less fortunate Lemister sons whom he had nowhere to go. They'd be welcomed by us all and join us for holiday dinner, cheer, and a great cooked meal. Uh, this taught us all a truly great lesson and a lesson of unity and love to all, especially the less fortunate among us. My dad's example in legacy was one of faith, hard work, and practice, practice, and more practice. To give to give your all in all that you do and remain loyal to what and who you love. Sid Brown was truly a great man in so many ways. He touched all with his inner charisma, his playful charm, his dry humor, and his classic old school tough guy attitude exterior. All who knew him never forgot him. Most of all, he was cherished. He was a cherished friend and helpful, loving man to all he knew. Congratulations, Dad. Thank you very much. Our next inductee uh, is Kerry Callahan, who coached me with Emo Johnson for 20 years. I feel like I, I watched uh, Cal's play. I feel like I, I've heard all about him. A graduate of Lemerson High School, class of 1986, member of the Who's Who American High School students, 84 through 86, eight varsity letters, team captain in soccer, basketball, and baseball, Central Mass Conference Soccer All-Star, Worcester Telegram and Gazette Soccer All-Star, uh, most valuable player in soccer, 1985, Central Mass Conference Basketball All-Star, Worcester Telegram and Gazette Basketball All-Star, Central Mass Conference Baseball All-Star all three years, uh, co-most valuable player in baseball, Central Mass Umpire Association Baseball All-Star, MVP of the Division I Baseball State Tournament 1986, Massachusetts Division I Baseball State Champs who are already in the Hall of Fame 1986, Winning pitcher in the Division One Baseball State Championship game, 12 and 0, five saves, 2.19 ERA, 100 Ks and 106 innings pitched in 18 appearances in baseball. Something tells me they didn't have the pitch count rules back in 1986. <laughs> Elliot Jess Coaches Award for Outstanding Male Athlete, Cape Cod Senior Babe Ruth All Star, New England Champions World Series in Kingston, North Carolina. Uh, pitched 15 innings, again, no pitch count rules. First Indiana, six innings, first California, 21 innings, zero earned runs, 21 Ks, named to all World Series team. Captain of the Tufts University baseball team, 1990. Greater Boston League All-Star, no hitter versus Boston University in 1989. New England champions, 1989. All-time strikeout leader at Tufts University when he graduated in 1990. Very impressive, Kerry Callahan. popped over the house yesterday. He's like, you're nervous? I'm like, yeah, of course I'm nervous. <laughs> He's like, you know, the trick to a good speech is to have a good opening and a good closing and make sure they're really close together. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
first of all, thank you to the committee for this incredible honor. Uh, I stand here tonight with an, a sense of uh, humility, gratitude to be inducted into the LHS Hall of Fame. It's a, it's a true honor beyond words and one that I will cherish forever. As I look back on the journey, I'm reminded of the countless individuals who have played an integral role in uh, shaping my path forward. I want to express my deepest appreciation first to Coach Emil Johnson, who's here tonight, and Coach Ron Mazzaferro. Uh, their unwavering dedication, guidance, and belief in me were a driving force behind my success at LHS. Coach Johnson's relentless pursuit of excellence, Coach Mazz's steadfast commitment to teamwork, have left an indelible mark on me as an athlete and as a person. It's their teachings that have instilled in me the values, the work, the perspective that have guided me throughout my career and my life. I also want to give a shout out to Don Frieda, who's here, for keeping our uh, dugout sane. When Coach Johnson was doing the weird championship, ideas, <laughs> Coach Frieda was there to kind of keep it stable. So beyond any uh, individual accolades, lies the essence of what makes this honor truly special, and that's teamwork. None of this would have been possible without the support of my teammates, whose friendship and camaraderie have been the cornerstone of our collective achievements. There's too many to name, so I'm not going to name any. Um, they know who they are, and they're the reason why I'm here tonight. Together we weathered the highs and the lows, celebrated victories, uh, learned from our defeats, all while forging bonds that last a lifetime. As I stand here tonight, I'm reminded that success is never achieved alone. It's the culmination of countless uh, sacrifices, tireless dedication, and the support of family, friends, coaches, and teammates alike. Each one of you has played a pivotal role in shaping who I am today, and I'm eternally grateful for that. Again, I just want to thank all those who have believed in me, supported me, inspired me along the way. It's my mom, Betty, who's here tonight. Um, I want to thank you for all the love and the support throughout my entire life. I was constantly learning life lessons as well as athletics from you, as well as from my brother Sean and my father Paul. Uh, I truly had a great support system growing up. To my teammates, thank you for your camaraderie and friendship. To everyone here, uh, thank you for the incredible honor to be part of this unforgettable journey. And to my girlfriend Heather, thank you for always being by my side uh, during this crazy ride we call life. How are you? Uh, so let us continue to strive for excellence, lift each other up, embrace the power of teamwork in all that we do. But that's it. Thank you. That 12 0 season is still a record, too. Pat Gallagher, who's pitching for the Toronto Blue Jays right now, got to 11 0, uh, but then the coaching staff blew it on the, la on the last one. So it's, it's, the 12 0 record is, is, is still the record of Lebanese High School. Uh, our next inductee is Richard Degno. graduate of the class of 1976, earned seven varsity letters, basketball three-year starter 74 to 76, team captain in basketball, led team in assists 1974, 1975, and 1976, basketball team MVPs 1975, 1976, Worcester Honor Team Division I basketball 1974, 1975, 1975, 1976, qualified for districts, lost to St. John's by one, Baseball, two-year starter, 1975-1976, pitcher in outfield, pitchers 3-0, 2.27 ERA with four saves. Uh, baseball batted, batted 406 and 385. Co-captain of baseball, 1976. Boston Globe Central West All-Star, 1976. Worcester Telegram, Fitchburg Sentinel, Central Mass Baseball All-Star. LHS Athlete of the Year, 1975 and 1976. LHS football, 74, 75, uh, quarterback, cornerback, 11 interceptions, punt, return kicker. LHS football, football Hall of Fame, member of the Worcester Dream Team football, 1975, Super Bowl Hall of Fame, championship football team, 1974, 
College of the Holy Cross four-year uh, varsity starter. Hit 346, 1980, All New England, Division One Baseball All-Star at Holy Cross. Richard Decknell. And uh, thank you for the committee, LHS committee, um, you do, for your due diligence and hard work, Richie. Thanks for that introduction. Really appreciate it. And congratulations to all of the award winners tonight and also all the Hall of Famers, Lemons High School Hall of Famers. There's a lot of them here tonight, so congratulations. Um, and it's an honor to win a multi-sport award following our dad, Jack Degnall's four-sport Hall of Fame introduction, I'm sorry, induction in 2022. And as far back as I can recall, I played sports every day, rain or shine. We weren't playing video games, we were playing sports, whether organized or make-up games, in a sandlot fashion. Our house on 107 Highland Ave was a perfect setting. We had a large yard for football, a first-class basketball hoop and backyard and, in, and backboard that Dad built with the help of his friends, including Sid Brown, and a stone wall which is ideal for throwing tennis balls off the wall. As a little kid in the 60s, we went home when the street lights came on. We cut through neighbors' houses in yards to get to baseball fields, basketball courts, football fields, in school. We once rode our bike 25 miles to Webster's Shoe Store in Hudson to buy sneakers and 25 miles back. And our mother made the mistake of saying, what did you boys do today? We would throw snowballs at passing cars to strengthen our arms and sprint away for endurance when they started chasing us. And yes, we traveled in the back of our dad's big blue pickup truck. With six Degnault kids, we created a new sport, tormenting babysitters. <laughs> Brother, brothers Jack, Chris, Tom, Louis, Sister May, and I, a very sorry Janie Sidlow. We abused her. Our mom was a self-proclaimed bus driver, he called us Hellions, and we didn't disappoint. Our dad drummed beat Fitchburg in our brains, and we didn't disappoint. We're truly blessed to have, we're truly blessed to have a wonderful upbringing, um, and to have loving parents, Chicky and Jack, who encouraged and supported us through all of our endeavors. My dream and goal growing up was to play for Lemmesta High School, and I succeeded in three sports. Yes, yes, uh, it's great to have accomplishments and championships. I was best in baseball, loved the game of basketball, and had the most fun playing football. I can only reminisce of my days at Lemmesta High, and thinking back on my time in sports, the lessons and the experience I gathered are many. Use this one. <laughs> so in thinking back on my time in sports, the lessons and experiences I gathered on many. I was lucky to learn and play for wonderful coaches. I played in Huck Hannigan's last Lemons to High football game, Ted Damko's last basketball game, while Ronnie Maz took over the helm my senior year, a senior where we qualified for the district playoffs. I played in Emil Johnson's 100th win on his way to the winningest coach in Massachusetts high school baseball history. I learned more from Emil than, in, than our college coach at the time at Holy Cross. And at Holy Cross, I played J.D. Hoop along with my cousin Lou Lally for the great Togo Palazzi Worcester. While my coaches had a profound influence in my life, more importantly, I truly enjoyed learning, competing, and having fun with my teammates, who are the main reason that I'm on stage tonight. Many of my teammates became, have become lifelong friends, well, with whom I remain active in golfing, catching a movie, or grabbing a meal. Some teammates achieved greatness. It was an honor to play with a parade football All-American in Charlie Kerouac. I played six years two at Lemons to High and four at Holy Cross with Teddy Rockwell, who was drafted by the New York Mets. And I played with a Rhodes Scholar athlete in Ronnie Perry, a shortstop at Holy Cross who was drafted in both baseball and in basketball. Now retired, 
65, married for 40 years. I love you over there, Cindy. With two incredible, amazing kids, Mark and Erica, four fantastic grandkids, Mark and Ashley's AJ and Stella, Erica and Mike's Daphne and Howie. Thank you once again to my brothers and sister for all your support. I cannot forget my cousins who exemplify family. You always show up and demonstrate what family means. And while mom has passed and dad is 90 years old, it's our parents, Chicky and Jack, who are the true Dead and All Hall of Famers. Finally, last November, I entered into the Lemons to High Football Hall of Fame with the theme of Deep Fitchburg. Today, I end my comments with a resounding thunder up, go OKC Thunder. <laughs> Rick's father, Jack, is also in the Lemister Athletics Hall of Fame, which was absolutely amazing. <clears throat> None of this microphone stuff would happen if Bob Healy was here tonight. <laughs> I told you I was a bad pinch hitter. Coach Johnson, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have put me in there. He wouldn't have put me in there. <laughs> our, our next uh, inductee is Paul Case, Lemister High School graduate, 1961, varsity letters in baseball, <coughs> basketball, and track, baseball three-year starter at shortstop, North Worcester County All-Star in Baseball, Basketball and Baseball, Co-Captain 1961, North Worcester County Baseball Champions 1961, awarded LHS Baseball Sportsmanships Awards 1961, two wins over FHS in Baseball, Big Fitchburg, Basketball Starting Guard 1960-1961, Track competed in the 100-yard dash, 220-yard dash, and long jumper, Won a medal of the 220-yard dash in Worcester County Championship, 1961. Third leading scorer in track, 1961. Competed in track while playing baseball in the same season. Uh, UMass Amherst varsity baseball two years in track one. Head basketball coach, Athol High School for 12 years. Golf coach, Athol for 12 years. Played baseball in semi-pro Blackstone Valley League. Member of the basketball officials, 10 years board, 44. Member of the Mount Wachusett faculty, 20 years, math and computer science, Paul Case. to the other members of the Hall of Fame 2024. It's been a long time since I've been back here. Graduated in 1961, 63 years ago. I have a lot of uh, memories and a lot of people I'd like to recognize. I narrowed it down to four to keep it uh, simple for all of you. I liked all sports, but I loved baseball. So I'm going to begin with my baseball coach, Coach Johnson. No, not that Coach Johnson. <laughs> my coach was Bill Johnson, Emil's uncle. He was my coach in both 60 and 61. And Bill had help. As each practice was going to begin over there in Doyle Field, a gentleman in a sport coat and tie would walk across the field, take off his sport coat, roll up his sleeves, grab a bat and a ball, and put us through our infield practice. That gentleman was Emil Johnson Sr. So I look at it, the Johnson family 
really began in 1960, not in 1968. Second on my list is a good friend who I invited here tonight, John Boyle. John and I, John and I were co-captains in 1961 on both the uh, basketball and the baseball teams. Uh, he was a great catcher on our 61 team that won the North County Championship. We left uh, high school and both went to uh, UMass to play sports. John in football, me in track and baseball. After all these years, we still get together over here at the uh, Main Street Cafe in Leominster, along with other members of the uh, class of 61, talking about old times and, and maybe exaggerating a little bit how good we were back then. Third on my list is someone you recognize, Coach Charlie Broderick. in the AD in 1961. And Charlie gave me the opportunity to run on the track team at the same time I was playing baseball. So in the spring of 61, every day I had a baseball game, I had a track meet, or I had a baseball practice followed by a track practice. I look back at that time and I say, how could it get any better than that? <laughs> Last on my list is somebody that maybe not all of you recognize. His name was Angelo Stiff Bacusi. <laughs> Angelo was the coach of the Lemster team in the old Blackstone Valley League. And the day I graduated from <clears throat> Lemonster High School, he invited me to join that team. Nice. The team was made up of fabulous former Lemonster High School baseball players. The bat boy on that team was Greg Bacusi. <laughs> Greg, of course, was elected to the Hall of Fame just two years ago. And the infielder who played with me on that team was Emil Johnson, Jr. <laughs> so although I wasn't lucky enough to have Emil as my coach, I was lucky enough to have him as my teammate. I'm gonna end by saying two thank yous. One is to my wife, Christine. And the other is to my old friend, Bobby Savicelli. Chris and Bob, uh, hiding it behind me back, unfortunately. Work many hours on the phone, emails, to make this happen for me tonight. And I thank them both. Thank you. Our next inductee will be Alyssa Frieda, graduate of Lemerson High School, class of 2001, eight varsity letters, four in soccer, four in softball, LHS softball team captain 2001, LHS softball offensive MVP in 2000, Central Mass Soccer Coaches All-Star 2000, Central Mass Softball Coaches All-Star 2001, Central and Enterprise All-Star softball team 2000-2001, Telegram and Gazette Division I Softball All-Star 2001, 
LHS record for single season highest batting average, 657. Wow. I feel like that's safe. My record is safe. <laughs> LHS single season batting average is 431, 657, 452. 2002-2005 uh, Fitchburg State University softball four-year starter. Set the record for most games played, 140 uh, at-bats, 445 hits, 146 triples, 10. Uh, second all-time career total bases, 195 for Fitchburg State University softball. All Mascot Conference All-Stars in 2002, 2003, 2004. Earned Bachelor's Degree in Exercise Science at Fitchburg State University in 2006. Master's of Science in Sports Management, Bond University, Australia. Director of Certified Athletic Trainers, Kingston, Rhode Island. Assistant Athletic Director, Rocky Hill School, East uh, Greenwich, Rhode Island, 2008 to 2010. Director of Program in Dedham Public Schools, 2022, Alyssa Friedman. <coughs> biggest inspiration, my dad, Donnie Frieda. Also known as Donnie Baseball or Donnie.com back in the day by the baseball team for his dad's obsession. From keeping score at my niece's soccer games to counting critters in the pool, his dedication is unmatched. Who would have guessed that in the summer of 2022 I discover his meticulously documented list with a total of 121 frogs, six salamanders, four chipmunks, one mouse, and one squirrel in the pool on the kitchen counter. While my dad fine-tuned my batting skills, my mother's unwavering presence fueled my passion on the field. My mother, Debbie, was my eternal cheerleader in the stands, keeping the energy high with her lively banter. Back then, I may not have fully appreciated it, but as I reflect on my career, her constant support warms my heart. The real treasures of my athletic adventure aren't in the trophies, but in the values learned in the team spirit. Every moment from spring break training trips to Florida with my dad, or daily batting cage sessions, focusing on staying on hitting fives, oh, four fives and sixes, sorry about that. Um, it molded me into the player I became and instilled values like teamwork, respect, and commitment, uh, which continue to shape my daily endeavors. Not to mention our team was really good, and uh, we worked really hard and we had a blast. Seeing my nieces Hannah and Sarah dive into their own sports passions reminds me of the pure joy sports bring. To everyone who's been a part of this ride, thank you for the memories and an wavering encouragement. And I know many of my father's players will get this reference, but tonight's a six. <laughs> thank you. I don't think I ever hit the ball hard enough to get a six in practice. If anyone want, needs hitting lessons, you might want to talk to our next inductee. His daughter hits 657. So, <laughs> our next inductee is Donald Frieda, graduate of Lemister High School, class of 1972, six varsity letters in soccer and baseball, captain in both varsity soccer and baseball, set the single season soccer scoring record 25 goals in 15 games, six hat tricks. Set the record for most points in a soccer game, nine. Five goals and four assists. Set career varsity scoring record, 67 points, 40 goals and 27 assists. 1971, soccer team advanced to the state semifinal game. 1972, batted 426 in the league and 328 overall with 15 RBIs. 1972, baseball team won the league title and advanced to the district final. 1972 received the Lancelot Fowler Award for Spirit of Team Play. LHS Assistant Soccer Coach, 1973 to 1983, State Championship, uh, 1978. 
LHS assistant baseball coach, 1976 to 2015, four state championships, 1986, 1988, 1996, in the 2014 team. LHS co-head baseball coach, 2003, 2004. LHS Mass State Baseball Coaches First Assistant Coach of the Year Award in 2001. Massachusetts Teacher of the Year in 1986. Career 108 uh, seasons as an interscholastic coach in three sports, that's amazing. 1973 to 2015, coached 1,765 games, recorded 1,072 wins, some losses, <laughs> some ties. Michelle Barigio, head soccer coach, three consecutive state finals, 1999, sorry, 1990 championship, Massachusetts State Coach of the Year 2000, Central Massachusetts Soccer Coach of the Year five times, inducted to post-151 Lemonster American Legion Hall of Fame in 1998. Donnie Frieda. Woo! for this uh, lifetime honor for me, and uh, especially Billy Devani, who nominated me for this, and I really appreciate that. This is a special night. Uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for the people that showed up, especially my group, uh, my family, my daughters, Leslie and Alyssa. Alyssa had to be here, but uh, Leslie didn't, and she's here. Uh, my granddaughters, Hannah and Sarah, uh, if you paid attention to the slideshow, at the end of the baseball section, uh, there was two little kids with their arms around each other watching the state championship game at Holy Cross. That was Hannah when she was six years old and her cousin Hunter. They love baseball and they love each other. I want to thank my mother who flew up here from Florida, 92 years old. She didn't want to miss this. You won't clap for this because she wanted to wear her Tampa Bay Rays jacket and said, bad idea. And she's sitting next to my 93-year-old mother-in-law who uh, is my favorite mother-in-law. My oldest one. A few years ago, she called me up on the phone. She says, how's my favorite son-in-law? I was thrilled. I said, I'm great. How are you? She says, oh, Donald, I was trying to call my other son. And I knew where I stood there. It's, this is awesome because there are many players in this room who I've been able to coach. And to have the floor and sharing with them this honor is just terrific. And... Uh, especially to be here for the first time, I think father-daughter combination being inducted in the Lemonster High School Hall of Fame is wicked cool. <laughs> when Alyssa was three years old, I wanted to make sure she had full arm extension. I didn't want her to swing in here, so I had her start with her hands out and when I tossed her the first wiffle ball, she hit it over the roof. Now, we only lived on a ranch, and it was a short roof, and she used a fat wiffle ball bat, but still, I was, I said, had a baby, that's the way to hit the ball. When she was eight years old, she was playing slow pitch softball at the Lassie League field in Lemonster. I had just got out of a baseball practice, and I rushed to get there to see her play. 
I ran past the concession stand, and uh, when I looked around the corner, she was walking up to home plate. So I went immediately to the right field foul pole, and I watched her take that first at bat. The pitcher was only 40 feet away, and she's lobbing these easy lobs into the strike zone. The very first pitch, Alyssa hit a screaming laser line drive right back through the box. It hit the pitcher in the chest. She went down to her knees and buckled to the ground. It reminded me of the time when I heard stories of a little leaguer and a college player getting hit in the chest by a line drive. It caught them in between heartbeats. Their hearts stopped beating and they both died on the field. I was very worried about this girl. The coaches ran on the field. Her parents came out of the stands to attend to her. And soon she stood up and she was okay. But the parents took her to the hospital just to see if she could have an evaluation. So as worried as I was, Deep down, <laughs> in my mind, I was saying, "Had a baby!" Melissa <laughs> <laughs> went on to have a great high school career and a college career at Fitchburg State, uh, breaking several records, and she followed the path of Tara Herrick Witzkel, who did the same thing, stand out at Lemister High and broke records at Fitchburg State. So uh, to both of you, I say, a baby! That's the way to hit your way into the Hall of Fame. Very good. My career started when I was in the third grade, playing Little League, and at the time, uh, my family moved uh, to another street on Tisdale Street. And I only had a few friends there, and they were younger than me. So I spent my time teaching them how to play baseball so I could play baseball. And uh, it was great. I liked teaching the game that I knew. But it really took off in the seventh grade. The first day of school, Gallagher Junior High School, seventh grade class, 8 o'clock in the morning. Now I'm going into a, a new junior high coming from Bennett School. My very first class was print shop with Mr. Johnson. <laughs> he gathered everybody around a big paper cutter. And this was huge. The metal table, it had a big arm. You needed two hands to press down and you could cut a stack of papers a foot tall right through like butter. He needed some help. He wanted volunteers. The blade had been sharpened over the summer, and he needed two people to volunteer to hold the blade in place so they could put it back into the slot. I raised my hand. Derry Arbo raised his hand. He called us up, and he says, don't worry, there's masking tape on the blade. So we're holding the blade, and our job was to hold it still, and as he moved, the bracket down, it was supposed to go like this, and he would bolt the blade into place. But instead, when it came down, it didn't go this way, it hit the blade and pushed the blade down into my hands. Derriabo knew to pull out really fast, but I kept my hands in there because I wanted to get an A. <laughs> and I could feel my fingers getting cut. He cut, sliced my fingers across the four, and uh, when I showed him, he says, you're okay, go see the nurse, she'll give you a Band-Aid. <laughs> I could have lost four fingers. <laughs> I went to the nurse, she said, Band-Aid, I gotta take you to the hospital, you need stitches. So I went to the hospital, got stitches, I missed eating in, the, in a cafeteria for the first time, and, uh, you know, it was my introduction to Mr. Johnson. <laughs> By the time I was in the eighth grade, I was learning about the California job case. We had to study each compartment that contained letters like you would see on a typewriter. And we had to memorize where they were. And when the test was uh, given, 
mine was finished first, so I had nothing to do but sit next to his desk and watch what he was doing. He was making out the lineup of his afternoon baseball game, uh, and I said, wow, I want to be a teacher so I could coach. I want to be a coach. And then I could work on my coaching while I was teaching. So he was an inspiration to me, and I went on to be a teacher. And uh, uh, when I, when I uh, became a sophomore, I made the varsity soccer team. And, you know, I got to see what it was like to play for him. He taught me how to score goals. He, we practiced shooting every day. He rolled the ball out in all different angles, bouncing, rolling, head balls, chest balls. And uh, he mainly said, always shoot for the far post. So I became a sharpshooter, and it wasn't what you think. I mean, I was really good at shooting, and um, I would actually aim at him. <laughs> I tried to hit him because he was standing on the far post rolling out the balls, and I hit him a few times, and I got him back for almost amputating my four fingers. <laughs> He had a lot of compassion. <laughs> so uh, I uh, started coaching the freshman soccer team when I was a sophomore in college, and then I coached the baseball team when I was a uh, senior in college at Lemister High. And after a while, I realized that working alongside Coach Johnson was just as demanding as playing for him. He held everyone to his accountability. Some of you may know Brian Mazzaferro. One day, my JV team had finished the season, so I moved up with the varsity to help coach the varsity prepare for the tournament. So he says to me, take Brian Mazzaferro over to the fence over there and hit him some hard ground balls. And I liked that idea. So I took Brian over by the fence at Doyle Field, bordering the railroad tracks, and I started hitting them easy. And all of a sudden, I started to say, Brian, they're going to come a little harder. I started to hit them harder. But then, the hardest one I hit, I got under the ball, and I hit a screaming line drive over Brian's head. It went over the fence. It crossed the railroad tracks. It went over the backyard of the house <laughs> next door, and it went right through the kitchen window. <laughs> oh, my God. So I said, Coach, I just broke a window in the Proietti house. He says, well, go get my ball back. <laughs> so I had to walk across, you know, through the gate, over the railroad tracks, through the backyard, and up the stairs. I knock on the door, and the oldest daughter, Janet, Janice, uh, answered. And I, I, when I looked inside, I could not believe. I was stunned to see that the ball hit the table as they were eating spaghetti. It knocked the bowl off the table, spaghetti was all over the floor, and glass, shards of glass everywhere. And I apologized, I said, I'm very sorry, I didn't mean to do this, it was an accident. I said, but can I have my ball back? <laughs> Mr. Proietti said, you can have your ball back, but I'm going to send the bill to Ted Danko. I said, that's okay with me. <laughs> so I took the ball and I left. And I went and I gave Coach Johnson the ball and thankfully, Brian was on his way to the batting cage to hit and I didn't have to hit him any more ground balls. But after that, I felt like a real jerk because I could have, I should have helped them clean the mess. But instead, I was more concerned about getting the ball back to Coach Johnson. While I was coaching at Lemister High School, I was very proud to tell people that I coached there and, or played there. Over the years, I learned a lot about the dedicated athletes that came through. Those who overcame incredible odds, who exemplified the hard work and confidence of playing, who always put their teammates ahead of themselves. Now, I remembered these stories, and I told them every year to my new teams 
to give them examples of what we're looking for in Columbus to High Baseball. I told stories about Matt Poole, Jeff Hudson. What did they do? Well, Matt Poole was my JV manager. He had been a manager for Coach Barnaby when he was a freshman. Great manager. Coach Johnson saw how good he was. He wanted to steal him from me. And he tried to bribe him with Red Sox tickets. <laughs> Matt denied. He says, I am not going to leave Coach Frieda's team. So he stayed with me, and that showed loyalty. So I like the fact that he was loyal. And Matt went on to not only coach, uh, be coach's assistant on the varsity, but he helped hydrate every team at the high school. He was always there. It wasn't just baseball. He had gone into the Navy, but when he came back, he is the hydration specialist, I would think the best in the world. Outstanding. And I'm so happy that he's here today to get an award. <laughs> Jeff Hudson. We had 45 players come out as a on a JV team, and he was a freshman, and it was tough to make that team. Very good team, and he didn't make it. I picked two sophomore shortstops ahead of him. Over the year, he got a trainer to make him a better player. He wanted to play baseball so bad. The next year, he made the varsity. He beat those other two sophomores and became the starting shortstop and went on to become the most valuable player in the state final, state championship game. He went on to Bentley College and broke all kinds of records, batting average, RBIs, home runs. And he got drafted by the Atlanta Braves and I cut him. <laughs> but I would do it again, and it gave, it gave my, my players oh, a chance to see that it doesn't have to be the end of the world. If you really want to improve yourself, you've got to keep working hard at it. These are the kinds of stories that uh, I relayed to my, my team over and over again. I wanted to prove a point. I wanted to motivate the players, and I want, wanted to give them exceptional Blue Devil role models, to promote the standard of excellence that Lemister stands for, and to be proud to be a Lemister High School Blue Devil. To finish up, I remember in 1996 when your baseball team won the state championship and the bus uh, came into Lemister downtown, and I was saying, oh, it's going to be like a duck boat, duck boat parade waiting for us coming in. But it was a hot Saturday afternoon. And as we approached the center of town, it was desolate. It was like a ghost town. There was nobody there, except when we went right by where the old little kitchen was, there was Joey Casey standing on the side of the road with his Lemons the Blue Devil hat. And all the players went to that side of the bus and opened up the window and cheered, telling Joe Casey we won the state championship. That was the thrill of the moment. Fast forward, 2014, we beat Norwood 6-1 to one at Holy Cross. We came home with an escort. Van Mazzarella <laughs> led the police car from Worcester to Lemister and took us right to Doyle Field. We got off the bus and there was a Starburst concert going on. Hundreds and hundreds of people were on the baseball field listening to music by Bob Healy's orchestra. We walked on the field and we felt like heroes. Coach Bonaby went up on the stage and told the crowd, and they went crazy. This was amazing. Bob Healy's band played music to the fireworks. Fireworks are going off in the sky. The players were holding up the trophy to this, this unbelievable event. It was like a field of dreams. It was our field. It was the Doyle Field baseball field. And this was going on. And it was a perfectly timed thing. And to me, that was the most exciting part of my career, is being part of that. I want to thank you, Coach Johnson. Max Preps is a national organization, and they rank school teams. And they ranked uh, the coaches of each state. And in the state of Massachusetts,
they ranked Coach Emil Johnson Jr. as the best coach in the history of all sports in the state of Massachusetts. He had 725 wins in baseball, 429 wins as a soccer coach. I owe my teaching and coaching career to him. It all started with him in that seventh grade. I'm glad the only thing I got cut was my fingers. He never cut me from any of his teams, so that was a good thing. I had a JV game, and uh, he had time to come and watch my team play. So he didn't like the call the referee made, so he went onto the field and told him about it. The referee said, hey, buddy, get off the field. He said, who do you think you're calling buddy? I'm the master around here. And uh, he really was. He really was. I want to thank Coach McCaughey for uh, his work with the catchers and pitchers on, in the last few years that he coached baseball, and I was always impressed with the way he coached the soccer team playing with the best Division I teams in the state. And Coach Barnaby, he had big shoes to fill in 2014, but he won a state championship in his first year coaching. I learned from him that not only was winning important, but also his compassion, his empathy toward his players and the community, and it was evidenced by the way he instituted a Coaches for Cancer game, a senior night celebration every year, game time music, and introductions of players coming to bat, his community services, sending his players to teach special needs kids how to play baseball, putting on Little League clinics, fundraising of all kinds, and serving on local and statewide committees to improve the game of baseball. I thank you all for helping make me a better coach. And congratulations to all the uh, inductees tonight. Uh, I'm so honored to be here standing with you. Uh, and as always, at a baby. Great job. Great job. Our next inductee is Patrick McMurray. Graduate of Lemiston High School, class of 1993, lettered in cross country, indoor and outdoor track, in the field for two years, indoor track team, outdoor track team co captain, 1993, member of the soccer and basketball teams, freshman and sophomore year, LHS indoor track record holder for the mile, four minutes and 26 seconds, LHS indoor track record holder, two mile, LHS indoor track record holder, 3,200 meters. New England Indoor Champion in the 3200 meters, 1992. Uh, New England Championship 4x800 meter relay team, 1993. LHS Indoor Track Record Holder 2 Mile. LHS Outdoor Track Record Holder 3200 meters. LHS Outdoor Track Shared Record Holder 4x800 meters. Finished second in the Massachusetts Outdoor State Championship in the Mile, 1993. Qualified, competed in the Massachusetts New England track time trials in 1993. Graduated Yale University in 1997. Yale varsity cross country team four years. 1997 team captain, all Ivy League. Graduated St. John's Law School, New York. Patrick McMurray. this as <clears throat> brief as I can. Um, I want to first thank the committee for nominating me and to congratulate all the other, <clears throat> sorry, 
And it's also uh, congratulate all the other inductees. Uh, it is an honor to be among your company. Uh, I want to make sure to, to thank a couple of coaches specifically, uh, starting with uh, Coach Mark Cleves, who is my cross country coach. Uh, who I do not expect to see here tonight, but he is here. Uh, coach Carl Baker, who is my track coach. Uh, coach Pete Laurel, who is here as well. Um, I also want to um, just take a minute to say how impressed I've been by the number of multi-sport athletes uh, that have been celebrated here tonight. Um, it seems I, I have two high school age kids, and it seems that so many high school athletes are specializing in just one sport, and it's really inspiring and nice to see uh, just how much uh, this high school values uh, multi-sport athletes. So. Um, in addition to my track and cross country coaches, I did want to make sure to uh, thank and recognize um, my basketball coaches, uh, Coach Mazzaferro, who's here tonight, um, Marco Sowski, who had been my freshman year basketball coach, uh, and also Coach Emil Johnson, who was my soccer coach as a freshman and a sophomore, uh, and kind of gave me permission to give up on soccer and pivot to cross country. Uh, I have a couple of uh, track relay teammates who were able to make the trip uh, to Leominster for tonight's event. Uh, Evan Valeri, who is class of 93, uh, and Jim Casey, class of 94. Uh, Evan is actually in from Arizona. Uh, Jim is in from Rhode Island, and it means so much to me to see the two of them here today, so thank you for, for being here. Um, <clears throat> I also just want to acknowledge a few of my track and field teammates from over the years who just made the sport so much fun and so enjoyable. Uh, specifically, Mike Bacone, uh, Nate Brown, Rich Scopoletti, and Ian Stacey. Uh, those guys just were, you know, wonderful companions on these distance runs through the woods and during track workouts as well. And I, I continue to cherish my memories of running with those guys. Um, <clears throat> I also want to quickly uh, thank my, my parents for being here tonight. They come, came up from Florida. Uh, my mother is here. Uh, my dad, uh, class of 1958 from Leominster High School. Um, and it's just been wonderful to see my dad especially reconnect with so many uh, Leominster High School um, classmates and friends. Um, my sister Erin is here tonight. She's Leominster High School class of 1990. Uh, my sister Maureen is here, class of 1997. Uh, my older brother Brendan was not able to make it tonight, but uh, we were teammates on the soccer team and on the track team. Uh, he's class of 1991. Um, so again, uh, just want to take a, just one more moment to acknowledge and appreciate my father, uh, who sort of at a young age turned me into a Lemonster High School super fan. Um, I have memories of going to football, soccer, baseball games at Doyle Field, uh, going to basketball games at Lemonster High School. Um, <coughs> scouring the Sentinel and Enterprise and the Telegram box scores on a daily basis and just like looking up to uh, when I was a, an elementary school student at Southeast and a junior high student at Gallagher, like looking up to those high school players and to see so many of them here tonight being honored has been a, a wonderful thing to, uh, to experience. Um, and that is, I, I also want to, uh, my, my two teenage kids are in Washington, D.C. They weren't able to make it here tonight, nor was my wife, but I do want to take a moment just to, um, you know, thank them uh, for all of their support, and it's been wonderful to watch the two of them uh, embark on, uh, a, you know, high school careers as multi-sport athletes as well. Uh, thank you for the honor, and enjoy the rest of the night. Our next inductee is Peter Morrill. Physical education teacher at Wemerston High School for 38 years, 1970 to 2008. Uh, coach from 1972, assistant boys track coach uh, to 2010. Boys and girls indoor and outdoor track coach, 1991 to 2010. Started a gymnastics program at Lemonster High School as a gymnastics show in 1972. Continued with gymnastics support until first team organized officially in 1976. Coach of the gymnastics teams from 1976 to 1978. 
assistant coach, 1975 district champion boys outdoor track team, 1977 coach of the boys championship, Central Mass, uh, CMC outdoor track team, coach of multiple Massachusetts state and New England champions, state coaches meet champions and other state in New England qualifiers. Uh, Peter Moore. children or the students that they could really apply themselves something they had never seen before. It wasn't soccer, it wasn't basketball, it wasn't baseball. And we introduced them and they became students who then became athletes. And we were really proud of what these people did. At the end of the three years, I think we were in double sessions and it just would not it just would not fly. Alright? But that was a marvelous time. Um, Excellent, excellent for these individuals. That was the gymnastics program. Well, what happened was, when you come, if you're a phys ed person, or a music teacher, or an art teacher, you promote the program. We use gymnastics to promote the program, is what we did, and it just evolved. Now, track. I come to track in 1970. Galaga, you're looking for a track coach. I volunteered, we took it. It was Division One, Division Two. For two years, we were undefeated, Division One, Division Two. These are the people that went on to 75 to win the districts. Right. And then we continued on and went on to the other things that we did. But that was track. And we just kept going. And I finally got out, you know, 38, 40 years later. And that would wrap it up. I had a great time. And I want to thank the people of Lemonster for allowing myself to work with the students. It was tremendous. It really was. And don't tell anybody, but we had fun. I had a blast. Okay, I really did. Um, I always felt secure. I'll leave you with this one. I did feel secure after 40 years. I'm working at Northwest. Steve Mamoni, principal, former student. Not bad. The athletic director at the time, Chris Young, former student, not bad. The head of the school committee, Dean Mazzarella, former student, not bad. Not bad. Dean, was that you? God bless America. All right. A hand for the mayor. Nice guy. Thank you very much, everybody. It is my, it has been a grand time. Thank you. of his mind when he, when he started seventh grade. So seventh grade, I must be this big, I was the smallest kid in the class. And they tell us the first day, remember this, Mark? Remember this? They, they tell us that we have to go to Werner's to get a job strap. I had no clue. It was the most embarrassing moment in my entire life. But I wouldn't trade the experience, ever trade any other experience with Ralph Case and Coach Morrow. They're just genuine people that loved every single kid and pushed us all to our greatest potential. So 
Yeah, awareness. Remember that? Awareness going to get you first. Come on. Everybody's like, no, I didn't do that. Of course you did. You went to awareness to get you first. Yeah, of course you did. Anyway, outstanding. Anyway, huh? Go blue. Go blue. Jack Dagno. I was in office for two years. I needed a truck. I went down. The only truck I could find that I really needed was a red truck. That man tormented me until I traded it in and bought a blue truck. <laughs> All right, our, our next inductee is uh, Michael Russo. <laughs> Graduate of Lawrence High School, class of 1983. Seven letters in varsity baseball and hockey. Member of the undefeated 1983 championship baseball team. Member of the 1981-1993 district championship team. Uh, I tell you what, 1983, there was no state championship. Coach Johnson still calls that probably his most talented and best team ever. Coach Palazzi might agree with that as well. So they pro there probably would have been another state championship, but there was no state title game that year. Starting outfielder as a sophomore for the district championship team. Uh, batted over 500 as a senior, breaking previous record. Drove in 44 runs, which is that's crazy. As a senior, breaking the previous record. Batted 5 for 5 in the district championship game, earning the MVP award. Most career hits all time on baseball to LHS. 40 hits in 80 at bats. Four years starter for LHS ice hockey team. Two time American Legion All Star 1983 1984. All New England College baseball player, Quinn Sigmund College, batting 470. Invited to play spring training with the Dodgers. Played professional baseball in Holland, stage with these other fine athletes. Truly an honor. To the Hall of Fame committee, thank you very much for electing me. Growing up right down the street, I always wanted to be a Blue Devil. On the west side of Leominster, there were plenty of places to play sports, and me and my friends would stay out all day. Those were some good times. Pat Bunnell, Reggie Roberts, Tim Spilios, and others would be playing ball at Cook's Field all day. And in the winter, we would be at Rockwell's Pond, shoveling off the snow to play hockey. My brother Keith and his friends would sometimes join us, and we would compete against each other. On a slightly different note, to this day, I sometimes think back to the outstanding youth leagues we had, from the Little Leagues to the Lassie Leagues, the Babe Ruth, the Legion programs. As a community, I think Lemister has always been fortunate to have coaches and parents that put in the long hours to keep these programs alive. To me, these dedicated people sometimes don't get enough credit for being part of the gateway that leads to consistently competitive teams at the high school level. For me personally, no one was more instrumental than my dad, Paul. From endless hours at the National Little League field, coaching, teaching kids, making sure the field was in good shape, you name it, he did it. All while running a busy construction business. He later took his love for the game to coach the American Legion team. And to this day, I'm asked by ex-players how he's doing and to see how much they love playing for him. He couldn't be with us tonight, but I wanted to know how much I appreciate him. And what can I say about my mom, Judy? Just about the kindest, caring, loving person, mother and grandmother one can imagine. Always smiling, always supportive, and she's the best. Thanks, Mom. Lemister has always been blessed with great ball players as well as athletes. I remember as a kid hearing names like Teddy Rockwell, Rick Como as well as my fellow inductee, Rick Degnoff. And I knew I wanted to be, I knew I wanted to be like them. 
The teams that I played for at LHS were also loaded with talent. From Mike Comadella, Dave Pavelitis, Dave Navaroli, and many others. We won district titles in 81, and came within a run of winning again in 82. Which leads me to my senior year, 1983, a team that was honored by this committee just recently. What a great group of guys. We had everything going for us. Joe Killalay was about the best pitcher I ever saw, and Kevin Paluccio wasn't too far behind. Outstanding hitters like Dave Palazzi, Tim Spalios, and others. Doug McIntosh was our catcher and a great leader. Teddy Losey is an outstanding defensive center field. I could go on and on, but on top of all that, we have one of the great coaches of all time, Coach Johnson, and his assistant, Coach Ware. I don't believe any team was as well prepared as we were. Coach Johnson always stressed fundamentals. Because of that, we hardly ever beat ourselves. I remember a line Coach Johnson used to say, repetition is the key to retention. That is a line I always took to heart, especially the work I put in by myself. Thanks, Coach Johnson. I was very fortunate to play alongside great teammates. All the individual accolades and statistics are great. And I truly appreciate it. But at the end of the day, baseball is a team game. And we had some truly great, and we had a truly great team. In closing, I'd like to thank my family and friends for being here. I love you guys. Thank you very much. Have a good night. So we'll also be giving hitting lessons uh, after this. <laughs> Those bats from Werner's Sporting Goods are red hot. Exactly, red hot. Our next inductee is Ryan Salvatore. Ryan graduated from Lumberstone High School, class of 1997. Varsity letters ice hockey four years, 1994 to 1997. He invited to play in the Spring Hockey Festival, Massachusetts Hockey, 1993. Mid-season report, North Central Mass High School report, Rookie of the Year, 1994. Central Mass High School Hockey All-Star, 1996 and 1997. Central Mass High School Co-Player of the Year, 1996 and 1997. Lemmerstar High School Hockey Co-MVP, 1997. Lemmerstar High School Hockey Team Captain, 1997. Telegram and Gazette High School All-Star, 1996 and 1997. 1997 LHS goal scoring records and assists, 91 points, 41 goals and 50 assists. Central and Enterprise All-Star, 1997. New England Pro-Am Hockey League, Elite Division I All-Star, 1996. Went to Wentworth Institute of Technology as a walk-on for hockey. Congrats, Ryan. to the stories uh, of all the athletes coming up here. I'm wondering why I am even up here. It's just, a, it's just amazing. Um, but I think we all shared one thing, and that was the love for uh, the sports that we played. Uh, and that wouldn't be possible without a, you know, the support of family, uh, friends, all that. So um, before I pass out, I'd like, to say, <laughs> I'd like to say thank you to my mother. She was always there for me in life and in hockey. Uh, you know, the coaches, Coach Guy, Coach K, I learned so much from those guys. Uh, you know, my older brother, I always looked up to him, especially in hockey uh, and in life. But most importantly, uh, I have to thank my father, who unfortunately isn't here for me uh, uh, to see this because he passed away. Um, he was always a life coach for me in hockey, everything. It, like, just his philosophy is just amazing. But again, thank you very much, and congratulations to everybody. Our, 
Our next inductee is Donald Trenton, uh, graduate of Lawrence High School, class of 1973, four varsity letters in ice hockey, 1969 and 1973, selected to the NCMHL All-Star Team, two years, 1972 and 1973, 1972 awarded District 3 runner-up trophy at school assembly, 1972 nicknamed Mr. Assist, uh, one goal and 19 assists uh, partway through the season, 1972 top scorer of the Spring League Hockey. Uh, team captain, team record uh, was 17-3 and 2. NCMHL top scorer, 20 goals and 24 assists. College hockey at St. Francis College. Co-captain at St. Francis College. LHS Junior Varsity coach, 1977-1979. LHS Varsity assistant coach, 1977-1979. Uh, District 3 champs, 1977-1978, 1977-1978 state finalists playing at the Boston Garden, 1994-1998 coach youth hockey in Rutland, Vermont, 2000-2006 coach girls uh, high school hockey in Rutland, Vermont, 1994-2022 played men's league hockey to the age of 67. Uh, Don lives out of state, he couldn't make it tonight, but he thanks the committee. Uh, and he's very grateful for this honor. Congrats, Dan. Thank you. Rich, Rich, you want me to? I can do a. I can accept this award. Accept it. Let's do it. We can do that. I get my own mic. Oh. And I, I promised Frank I wouldn't be here that long. You put me on the clock. Okay. Hey, it gives me great pleasure to accept this uh, award for Donnie Trenton. I went to school with him, I played hockey with him. Not only is he a great hockey player, a great leader, a great teammate, he's also a great friend of mine also. So, he wrote this, and I'm gonna accept this for him. He can't be here this evening, I guess he has some kind of other thing he has to do, so. He wants to, he wants to thank the committee and all the people involved. Wait, I can put the glasses on, sorry. <laughs> I need the readers, you like them, don't you? They're cute. He said, I want to thank the committee and all the people involved in the planning and organizing of this wonderful event. I am truly honored and appreciative of this induction into the Lemister High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Fairly recently, my 50th high school, I'm not that old, am I? My 50th high school class reunion was celebrated and I was fortunate to be able to attend. I was also blessed to be reunited with my high school hockey line mates. We shared old stories, talked about our lives and families, and had some good laughs. It made me realize the value in my high school experience was truly about the people I shared the game with, not the wins, losses, goals, or trophies. Lifelong friendships were made. Even as, even as I have lived in Vermont for 45 years, Lemister, and the people I know there will always hold a special place in my heart. Finally, I want to express my gratitude for this honor and congratulate all the other inductees. I am truly humbled. Praise for Safe John, for Safe Journey Don Trent. Thank you very much. Did Ray Richard just show up to the stage with his own mic? <laughs> Our next inductee is Tara, Tara Herrick Witzkel, graduated of Lemister High School in 1996, four varsity letters in softball, 1993 to 1996, 1996 softball team co-captain, three-year starting catcher, Sentinel and Enterprise All-Star, 1996, Midwatch Conference All-Star, 1996, State Shriner All-Star, 1996, played for the Worcester County Crush, 1995-1996, honor roll all four years at Lemister High School. 1996 MIA Academic Excellence Team Award. Four years starting catcher at Fitchburg State University. Three year FSU team co-captain, all mascot team. 1999 ranked 12th in the country, Division Three for doubles in a season. 1999 FSU Female Athletic Leadership Award recipient. 2000 FSU Female Athlete of the Year. 
1997 and 2000 broke 12 single season and career hitting records. 2010 inducted into the FSU Hall of Fame, earned a degree in early education and sociology at FSU. Coach Worcester County Freedom Polar Crush Central Mass Voodoo, FSU assistant softball coach, Lemonster Middle School and Lemonster High varsity softball coach. And let me tell you, the Lemonster softball team is rolling right now. If you haven't been following them, uh, Tara Herrick Woodskull. congratulate all the other inductees on their amazing accomplishments and contributions to Lemonster Athletics. We are truly being added to a wall, or hall, technically a wall, at Lemonster High School of greatness. As a teacher and a coach in Lemonster and as the mother of two high school students, I'm at Lemonster High School often and whenever I'm there, I stand in front of that Hall of Fame wall and admire the talented players, coaches, and contributors to Lemonster sports, like my good friend Ray Richard, Lynn Denning Keenan, uh, my 96 uh, state championship friends, the 87 and 88 softball state championship teams, my high school heroes, Lauren Hatfield and Tracy Toll, and of course, my coach, Frank Stefanides. I'm honored and humbled to be joining them on that wall. To my coach, Frank Stefanides, or Coach Steph, as we all called him, thank you for all that you've done for me and that you continue to do. You changed my life as a player in the spring of 1993 when I tried out for the softball team my freshman year. I had a strong arm, so I was determined I was going to be the shortstop for Lemonster High School. Coach pulled me aside and bluntly told me that I was too slow and would never, ever uh, <laughs> make it in that position. So he said, go put on the catching gear and go catch for the best pitcher at the time in probably Central Mass. I was terrified. I was completely uncomfortable. Um, but I think that's where my get comfortable with being uncomfortable came from. And I felt like I, I grew from that, from you. When the roster came out after tryouts, I made the varsity team. But Coach Steph told me I would play very little, if at all, that season. My job was to learn the position so I could take over the catching the following year. I trusted the process, I worked hard, I took lessons, I paid attention, and I became the starting catcher for the next three years. Thank you, Coach, for seeing something in me, believing in me, and always having my back. I literally would not be standing up here right now if it wasn't for you. So thank you, Coach. A huge thank you to my mother, Anita, for always being there to support me as a player and continuing to support me as a coach. She was at every high school game, traveled around the country with me with a polar crop, with Worcester County Crush at the time, and came to just about every college game that I played in, even in spring training in Florida. She recently gave me a box of newspaper clippings, hundreds of them between myself and my brothers and said, go through these and figure out whose is whose. I came across an article written by Steve Kendall when he used to write for the Sentinel and Enterprise. Back then, Steve and other reporters used to actually cover local sports. Unfortunately, we don't have that anymore. Um, but my mother thought that Steve Kendall brought us bad luck whenever he came to cover games. And she went right up to him in our game against Fitchburg and told him that he was bad luck and that he wasn't allowed to sit on the Lemonster side of the field. <laughs> he actually wrote that in his article and said, and I quote, mother of Lemonster catcher Tara Herrick. So thank you, mom, for that. For always having our backs and being a supporter of all my teams and teammates and not just me. So thank you. My father, Jim Herrick Sr., was my greatest coach and inspiration in the game. He played professionally for a short time with the Giants organization, so he knew a lot about the game. 
He loved the game of baseball almost as much as he loved his kids and instilled that love for the game in me. Before Game Changer and Huddle, my dad used his camcorder, those real big ones that you had on your shoulder, and he would record all my games, my hitting lessons, and me just playing catch in the backyard with my brother. He'd make me sit down, watch those videos, and critique everything that I did. When I became a catcher, all I would hear after games is you need to throw more change-ups. Every game he would say that to me, and I begged my mother to please drive me home so I didn't have to go in the car with him and listen to it. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I wouldn't give now for just one more of those talks. My dad passed away last year after a lengthy battle with dementia. The last few years of his life, he was in a nursing home, but before that, he was living at home with my mother, who was his sole caretaker. So to give her a break, I'd go and I'd sit with him on the couch, and I don't think he knew my name, and he probably didn't even realize that I was his daughter, but every time I sat down with him, he'd say, how softball? I don't know how he remembered that, but he did. That was our bond. That was our bond, and I'm so grateful that I had him. And I wouldn't have been the player I was then, or the coach I am today, if I didn't have him as my role model. To my husband, Jimmy, and our children, Tyler and Victoria, you weren't around during those high school years, but I appreciate you putting up with my love for the game of softball and listening, or at least pretending to listen, to all of my stories of the glory days. Thank you. My teammate, friend, assistant coach, Nancy LeBlanc, thank you for being here tonight. I couldn't do half the things that we do with Lemister High School softball if it wasn't for Nancy, so thank you so much. And finally, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame committee for all the work that you do to recognize our contributions to our sports and giving us this special night to shine as high school athletes one last time. Thank you. Lemister softball does have a lot of home games coming up. Uh, a it's, a, it's a fun team to watch. On a new field, too. So for those Brand new field. Uh, the, the next inductee is the 1977 girls track team, uh, who Joe Quinn has called maybe the greatest track team in Lemister High School history. 12 wins, 3 losses, 10 school records were broken. Uh, we're going to have Coach Police. Come up and introduce the team. He's very excited about it. recognize the people that are here. Uh, Wanda Pierce. So, you guys want to come down? Come on down. Liz Pitts. Jay Cody. Recognize his first name, Kathy Leahy. Yeah. Leanne Marciano. Yeah. 
Darlene Bernard. Noah McCarty. Sharon Mullaney. Colleen Mason. Waiting in the wings, Sue Ryder. And I think that's everybody that's present. Uh, Renee was going to say a couple of words, I think, but uh, before she does, I'd just like to uh, give a special thanks to Kyle Baker, who um, actually got the girls' track program off and running. So congratulations to him. of quick things I wanted to say. Uh, one, it's certainly an honor and a privilege to be here tonight, uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, and thank everybody on the nominating committee and everybody responsible for all of us being here. Um, I just really want to say for all of us that we want to thank our coaches, uh, Mark and the late Carl Baker. Um, they've been exceptional coaches. And I think all of us, it's interesting as we started to think about coming to, the, to this induction, I think we're all kind of buzzing with like, Ooh, who's going to be there and what were their records and what was their running and what did they do for events and at least I was thinking of that and I know I was talking to you know my sister about that and I'm sure others were doing that um, the other thing I think about is too as we have our kids and as they come up we're all they're all like so what did you do in high school you know like what were you part of you know and so we talk about our our truck um, which is like a really big thing for all of us I think um, and I just have to say that all of us were a really tight team and I think we all really had a super great time together. I think most of the time we cheered each other on. Um, we all tried new things, we laughed, and uh, we really just just enjoyed the seasons together. Um, the other, just another thing, I wanted to thank Mark in particular for all of his hard work and dedication to us. Um, he was very fun to have as a coach. Uh, and the one thing I want to thank you for was something that I'm not really sure you paid much attention to, but. Um, he was spot on with giving us advice about an upcoming event. So if we were going to have a race coming up, he would say, you're going to train this way, you're going to do it this way, and that person that you're running against is going to run this way. Um, and he would be spot on. You know, one example I'm just going to quickly give was I was doing a mile run against somebody from Fitchburg, and this woman was very short and probably twice my size. And, and I looked at her and I'm like, uh, uh, you know, there's no way that she's going to win. And Mark was kind of like, yeah, she's going to kick you on the last lap. She's going to keep you going, and on the last lap, she's going to just burn you. And sure enough, she did. <laughs> but he was spot on, and I trained the whole week for that. So thank you, Mark, for all of those, because I think you did that with everybody. You know, you were very good about knowing who your opponent was and what strategy to use. So that's impressive. Um, and with Carl, I, the late Carl Baker, I have to thank him. I think we all do because he was very um, fun to have as a coach as well. Uh, joked a lot with us. I think the one thing I want to say about him is he would make us try events we didn't necessarily want to try. And a lot of times it was just, you know, oh, you're going to just go do the shot put today. And you're going to do that today, javelin in the meet. And we were horrified. But we had no choice. We had to be signed us up and we're in. Um, and I think what we learned is it's just as important to have fun and try new things than to really just try to win and compete. So that was impressive and it was something that stuck with me. Um, and the other thing I just want to say about that is indoor track. Because I think we were at a time in 77 when Title IX was just coming into effect. Like it had to be implemented I think by 78. And we were on the cutting edge of that. A lot of us ran on boys teams. A lot of us had Carl stick up for us at indoor track to let us even run because it wasn't a girls thing. We weren't allowed to run in, a lot in the, uh, um, in the indoor tracks at Devons. So we were on the cutting edge of that and I think he really stuck up, stuck, stood up for us um, all the time. And I, I just would like to thank him for that. So anyway, Quite an honor, and we appreciate the opportunity here. Thank you. Line up for 
Okay, I'm going to wrap this evening up with, last but not least, the Lowside baseball team of 2014. They're Mass State champs, 20, 21 wins, 4 losses, team batting average was 324, ERA was 1.25, 14 home runs, 160 Ks, 35 walks. Phenomenal team, coached by Coach Rich Barnaby. And uh, Rich, sorry, All right, last but not least, um, we'll just, I'm just gonna call people up and uh, we'll go one at a time here. So, David Barry, uh, Kevin Shabbat, Nick Cordio, uh, Brett Corliss. I know all, not all these people are here, but they still deserve to be uh, acknowledged. Jared Warren, thank you for the clap. Uh, Brennan Cudahy, Andrew Curran, Brian DeHorsey, Vin Doan, Ben Doyle, Sam Gallagher, Danny Hernandez, the legendary Matt Houle, Tanner Jackalick, Chris Kay, Ryan Lever, Mike Lovewell, Jordan Mays, Neil O'Connor, Matt Pileski, Chris Piper, Jared Richards, Joe Rzewski, Ryan Sullivan, Tyler Vallette, Jay Valera, Connor Wernan, um, Coach Frida, and Coach McCahey. Please come up. Thank you for the committee for inducting us. Uh, so this committee was uh, officially founded in, in 2014, which is the same year we won the state title. So it's, on, it's almost like we welcomed the committee in uh, with a state championship. And I think I even said at Holy Cross uh, to the Globe when I was getting interviewed that, you know, in, in 10 years, we're gonna get this team back together for the Hall of Fame. So it's fitting that, you know, this team that came in, you know, this is the 10th year of the Hall of Fame, very successful. On the side note, we did start a baseball Hall of Fame before this um, as a retirement present for Coach Johnson. Also, I wanted to make sure Coach Johnson didn't reapply for the job uh, after, after my first couple losses. So, uh, but since then, the Baseball Hall of Fame has been uh, absorbed by the Leominster Hall of Fame. So thank you for inducting us. Um, this team is amazing. It's the most talented team I've ever coached. And we've won in the past few seasons. We've won over 20 games three times. I think this is a team that kind of set the model and brought winning back uh, to Lemonster baseball. We went 15 years with no league titles, 15 years with no district titles, and since then we have a state title, we have a state runner-up, we have five Midwatch A titles, we have four district titles, um, and we're in first place currently uh, in Midwatch A with a three-game lead with four games left. Um, <laughs> It'd be 
ranked number five in the state. And, and I think a lot of that is, thank you, Jared. I, I think a lot of that is, um, these kids saw Lumberstone Baseball win. They saw the pig pile, they saw the state championship, they saw that success and they believed in it. Since then, you know, we've sent a ton of players to Division One. some on this team. Uh, we have players playing in the, in the pro organization. Um, and it's just a credit, like I was maybe not that great of a coach my first few years coaching these guys, but I've kind of modeled my coaching off of them as a team. Like they made me a better person and a better coach uh, being around them. Uh, people we have to thank, for sure. And by the way, I asked these guys if they wanted to talk. None of them wanted to talk. <laughs> Which is weird, because they never shut up in the dugout. Absolutely never. Never shut up in the dugout. Headache every game. Um, Coach Johnson was a mentor for me, and also a mentor for a lot of these kids. Um, he taught us that the details matter. He taught us that winning matters. He, we squeezed three times in the state championship game. Um, Coach Johnson might have been giving me the sign from uh, the, the bleachers up there, and all right, yep, I got it. We, so, uh, like, his imprint is all over these guys. He coached all of these guys. Jay, we don't need to see what the sign was. This is, this is a family event. <laughs> We changed the sign uh, once I became, we became a more family friendly uh, team when I became uh, head coach. Um, uh, also Coach Frida, who was a big part, you know, as a young coach, um, didn't sleep for three months, nervous. Uh, he was kind of that, that constant calming force with us. And as you heard, he's got like five or six state championships himself. So you knowing that Coach Frida had my back, uh, was a big common influence for us. Uh, Matt Hull, who is family to us, who is you know one of my favorite people in the world, someone we love. Um, no one is more prepared for us. And, and our guys, when we show up to games, we feel like a professional team. We just beat Central Catholic last week, and they're like, are you sponsored by Gatorade? Like, I don't, like what is going on? Like, why do you have all this stuff in your dugout? Um, and he just makes it, he makes the kids feel special. Um, and I think when the kids feel special, they, they play a lot better. Um, Steve Ogahi, who might be the best soccer coach in Massachusetts and who was definitely the best baseball coach on this team uh, in 2014, uh, a relentless competitor, uh, someone who was always prepared for every single practice, someone who was just locked in from the first pitch to the last pitch. Um, I learned so much about coaching from Coach Ogahi um, in, you know, the, the years he was with us. And if anyone has a chance to go watch his soccer teams, they are world class. And, some of the best soccer in the state by far. Um, Dean Mazzarella, who gave us a police escort home. So I was on both police escorts home. <laughs> and Coach Fruit is right, but I also feel like, and Jared, maybe, do we see Papo on the way home too? Definitely Papo. Definitely, so we saw Joe Casey and Papo were the only people in Lemonster, but maybe our two biggest fans as well. So that's all we, that's all we really need. But then they have the mayor, like these guys came back to a world class. I still have pictures of us holding the state championship with like fireworks in the background and the maestro, uh, Bob Healy, is playing and the community of Lemonster um, was, is just so welcoming. It was just so welcoming. It was just a special moment for all of us. So there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of stories. We're not going to share them all. Some of them we can't share, but I think we're just going to focus on the team aspect of things. Um, Two things that I took from this team that I made kind of the staples of the program from these guys. Number one, they are the most competitive people you've ever met. Like they would beat you on the field and they'd race you to the car and then they'd go in the classroom and get straight A's. It took the city of Lemonster like 10 years to get over their MCAT scores. Like the, this was an elite class at everything and they were so competitive at everything. So like as a program, I stole from these guys, like we're just gonna be relentless. We are gonna absolutely compete on every rep in practice. We're gonna compete at every rep in the game. And it's really difficult to beat a team that never gives up and, and just tries their best and gets completely locked in. And that was something I got from these guys. They are so competitive. They're also very selfless and caring people. I think we won the state title because they just didn't want it to end. Like they, they love playing baseball with each other, even though they would be kind of mean to each other, uh, you know, with words. Like, they generally cared for each other and loved each other. So another staple I took from this team is just selflessness. Like, they put each other first. They picked each other up when they were down. 
if one guy made a mistake, we never worried because they knew someone else was going to pick them up. So, you know, Lumberton baseball's had a lot of success since this team. No, no other state titles. We've been in the state final, but I think it's like the model these guys have set for us is just unbelievable. And it, and it was my privilege uh, to coach these guys, and we were ranked 43rd in the country, and Lumberton baseball's on the map uh, uh, statewide. Um, and there's a lot of guys standing behind me that will be making speeches here, uh, you know, in a few years for their own individual accolades. So they were winners on the field, and they're also successful in life right now, too. So uh, my, my privilege to coach these guys. Thank you. Thank you. 